Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to show you guys how to fix dark and grainy photos using GIMP and Darktable. So here we have the after photo after I've done everything in the two programs and this was a night photo. I took it with a long shutter speed or a slow shutter speed and a tripod and I was able to brighten up this image here, get rid of some of the graininess after brightening it and then also sharpen the image a little bit so that it looked a little bit more clear. So here was the before photo. You can see this is a very dark photo. Uh, the only light really is coming from the house here and a little bit from the street lamp over here. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can achieve this much brighter image with a minimum loss of quality. But of course, before we get into that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. We've got tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here as well as Project Translate in our poll of the week, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And we recently hit our 350th student. It hasn't updated on here yet, but thank you to everybody who's enrolled in our course. And you can check out our official DMD merch page. 10 to 25% of all profits go to Habitat for Humanity. So I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So I mentioned that I'll be using a combination of Darktable and GIMP, and that's because I think Darktable handles darker photos a little bit better than GIMP does. I think uh, GIMP creates a lot more grain, a lot more noise. So what I'm gonna do is start by opening my image into Darktable, so I can just right click, go to Open With, and choose Darktable. You will have to download Darktable separately if you don't already have it on your computer. Uh, Darktable is a free program, so you won't have to pay for it. So once I have my image open in Darktable, what I want to do is go ahead and start by brightening this up. So I'll come over here and click on the basic group, and I'm going to start with my brightness and contrast, as well as my saturation. So I'll just turn my brightness up a little bit, and I'm also making sure to uh, not add too much or any of the haloing effect, which is basically when you brighten an image too much, it'll start to almost look like there's a halo around objects. So I'm just keeping an eye on that as I do this. But I'm just going to brighten this up to about there. We're going to brighten it even more using a couple other tools, so I'm not going to overdo it here. And then I'm just going to increase my contrast a little bit to compensate for the extra brightness we added. And then there's not a whole lot of color in here right now, so I'll go ahead and turn my saturation up a little bit. And we're also going to use the vibrance in here, so we don't want the saturation to be too high. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on here and close it out. And the next thing I'm gonna do is increase the exposure. This is another way to brighten your image. So I'll come over here to my exposure slider, and this is measured in stops on your camera, and so if you go up by every half a stop, that's going to be a pretty significant amount of brightness depending on your image. So I'm just gonna slowly drag this up manually. And again, I'm trying not to overdo it. You'll see if I go uh, too high here, it starts to blow out some of the highlights that are already in the image, in this case, the sky. So it's blown out the details in the sky. And that's not something we wanna do. So I'll just go ahead and keep this at 0.23 and then I'll increase my black slightly. And that's just kind of like the brightness contrast. It's going to help us add back in some of the blacks that were taken out when we increase the exposure to keep this from looking uh, a little bit too flat. And so you could do a before and after by toggling the switch right here. It looks like a power button. So there's a before and there's an after. You'll notice that I'm not doing anything too extreme here because the more you brighten an image in post, the more grainy it's going to look. And we're already going to be dealing with a decent amount of grain here, so we don't want to overdo it. So I'll go ahead and close out my exposure. And now I want to come over here and work on our white balance. So this photo right now, because we've got a lot of light coming from the street lamps and the house, it almost looks a little bit too orange here, so we're gonna go ahead and cool this image off a little bit. So right now the temperature is set to about 6500. I'm gonna come over here and just drag this temperature down a little bit to cool it off. And this can be up to you guys as to how much you want to cool it off. You'll notice that the more I cool it off, the bluer the sky gets. So I'll set this to around 5500 for now, and we can always change that later. And then I'm going to just drag my tint here, and you'll see this is almost like the hue slider in GIMP, and as you drag it around, it will change the uh, overall color of your image. And like all of the effects on here, I don't want to overdo it because it will start to look a little bit too artificial. But here's a before, and here's an after. So you'll see this has just color corrected our image a little bit so that it doesn't look quite so orange. And I'm actually just going to drag my temperature down a little bit more, just add a little bit more blue here. You'll see that as I drag this down more, my greens start to look a little bit more natural here. 
and uh, it just sort of is canceling out the orange from the street lamp over here. So I'll stick with about 4500. If you guys like 5500 better, you can go ahead and stick with that. So you'll see a button down here that says more modules. If you click on that, it'll give you some more options here on uh, ways you can adjust your image. And so now I'm going to look for vibrance. So here's vibrance. And if I just click on this a few times, it'll bring vibrance up on its own. And uh, that's because it's adding it to favorites. So this is now the favorites tab right here. So right now this is set to 25%. So I can go ahead and turn this up a little bit and you'll see that the more that I crank the vibrance up the more the colors start to pop out of this image. And I don't want to overdo it because it will start to look a little bit artificial. You'll see in the clouds here these clouds are starting to look purple and that's definitely not something we want. So I'll go ahead and drag this to about 60% here. And our clouds still look a little bit purple so what I'm going to do is come over here and come back to our white balance and see if maybe turning the temperature up a little bit will fix that and you'll see that it actually does. So there is a fine balance here between trying to make this image look natural in terms of the greens in here and the sky and uh, getting rid of that orange and then having too much of that and making things start to look like artificial colors. So we're definitely trying to find that balance here and if need be you can also come over here to uh, these sliders here and make some adjustments and so I've gone ahead and turned the blue down a little bit here while also adjusting the temperature. And uh, I found, I believe, a happy medium here where I've toned down some of the purple that was in the clouds, but uh, didn't take out too much of the blue in the rest of the image. All right, so now I'm gonna export this image. So I'll come over here to my light table tab and click on this image here. And over here, you'll see a drop down arrow labeled export selected. So go ahead and click on that. And you could choose your file destination here. You could choose the quality of your image here, so I have this set to 100. And I'll go ahead and hit export, and that'll export my image. And here you can see where it was exported and what the name of the file is. So now I've navigated over to my folder where this is located, and you can click on here. So this is what our image looks like right now. And I'll go ahead and close this out, and I'll right-click and go to Open With and choose GIMP. And so this will open our file up in GIMP. It's going to ask if I want to convert this file to the native sRGB color profile. So I'll go ahead and hit convert. And now here's our image that we were editing in Darktable, now opening GIMP. And we can compare this to the original image. So here's the original and here is the new image after we've made some adjustments in Darktable. There's still quite a few things we have to do here because it's still a little bit on the dark side and it is not entirely sharp so there's not a whole lot of detail in this image and then you can still see some of the artifacts from the camera. And hit Z to grab your zoom tool or click over here and then I'll zoom in here and you can really see how many artifacts were on this camera. Uh, so really a lot of specs on here that we need to get rid of. So I'll hit control and click to zoom out. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my layers panel here and I'm going to go ahead and start by adjusting the levels of this to try to brighten it up a little bit. So I'll go to colors, levels, and you'll see that the lighting is actually pretty even in this image, though there are some bright spots here. But I'm just going to play around with this here, the level. So the left arrow here is the shadows, the middle is the midtones, and the right side are the highlights. And I don't want to overdo this adjustment just because it will blow out, uh, especially the highlights here, or just really increase the graininess of the photo. But here's a before and here's an after, so this has helped us brighten up this image a little bit. We can also constrict the output level, so if I bring this left slider here, the shadow slider to the right, it's decreasing the output level for the black pixels, which is causing this to be a brighter photo. And if I bring this white slider over the highlight slider, you'll see that it'll darken the photo. So here's a before, here's an after. And we don't want to overdo this effect, but that looks pretty good to me. So I'll go ahead and click OK to apply those changes. And now our photo is a little bit brighter here. So the next thing I want to do is add some more saturation to this because the colors are still a little bit desaturated in my opinion. So I'll go to colors, saturation, and go ahead and turn the saturation of this up a little bit. So you'll see if I turn it up too much, the sky looks really artificial and a lot of the colors look pretty artificial. So I just want to turn this up a little bit here. And here's a before and here's an after. So I'll click OK. And now what I'm going to try to do is see if I can bring out some of the details in the highlights here. And I'm going to do that via the new Shadows Highlights feature, which is found in GIMP 2.10 and newer. So I'll go to Colors, Shadows Highlights. 
There is actually a shadows highlights feature in Darktable, but I think it creates too much of a haloing effect. So we're gonna see if GIMP's shadows highlights feature can work a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and drag my shadow slider here. And you'll see if I drag it all the way up, it has a very intense effect and this looks very artificial. So that's not what we want. And if I just incrementally drag this up, we can just sort of eyeball this until we get the amount of brightness in our shadows that we want. And you can see that inside of GIMP here, this is recovering some of the details in the shadows of our image without creating a halo effect. Darktable really does create that halo effect with this tool, even with the slightest adjustment. And then I'll also come down here and see if I can work on the highlights. And our sky does look really bright, maybe a little bit too bright so we can uh, adjust those highlights, turn them down a little bit. And then we can also see if we can adjust the colors here. And there doesn't really appear to be any effect, so I'm just going to keep this set at 50. Now you've also got the white point adjustment here. And if I drag this to the right, this will actually increase the number of white pixels in here, which will brighten up the image. So here is a before, and here's an after. So you'll see we've recovered a decent amount of details in the shadows, and I think overall this helps make our image look a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and click OK. So to me, this photo is missing a little bit of contrast at this point. We're going to create some of that with the Unsharp mask in a second. But before we do that, I'm going to use the Curves tool to add a little bit of contrast here. So I'll go to Colors, Curves, and I'm going to go ahead and click and create a point in the middle of our curve here. And then I'm going to create a point down here and just drag it down a little bit and then come up here, create a point and drag this one up a little bit. And that's going to create an S curve. You'll see that these changes I've made are very minute. I don't want to overdo the S curve just because night images really you can't add too much contrast or it will darken them up again. But here's a before and here's an after. So you'll see there's a little bit of contrast added here and I'll go ahead and click OK. So the next thing I want to do is get rid of some of the noise on here. And I'm going to grab my zoom tool and zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Again, it's these areas here, these problem areas where you have a lot of artifacts from the camera. Usually when the photos are darker, you're going to get more and more of these artifacts, depending on what lens you're using and what camera you're using. But I'm going to use the forward slash on my keyboard to bring up the search feature and type in noise reduction. And so you'll see we have our noise reduction giggle operation here. And I'll click on that. And the reason I'm going to stay zoomed in is because I want to see how this noise reduction filter is working on the noise we see in here, including the grainy parts of our image and these artifacts from the camera. So if I turn the strength all the way down, here's what this looks like without any noise reduction. And then if I turn the strength all the way up, you can see that really what this does is it blurs the image a little bit. But by doing that, it smooths out some of the noise you'll see in our image. And you can also do a split view here and do a side by side comparison to see what this looks like without and with. So uh, here's without the filter, here's with it. So it's made our image a little bit blurrier, but it's also taken out a lot of the grain. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And we're going to fix uh, the blurriness of this photo. And we still have some work to do with the noise. So what I'm going to do now is come over here and I'm going to change the name of this layer to House Night Photo. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And now we know we have a night photo copy here. But this is actually going to be a filter called Symmetric Nearest Neighbor. And that's just going to be another filter that's going to help us get rid of some of this noise here. And so what I'll do with this new copy layer selected is I'll hit the forward slash key on my keyboard again. And we'll type in Symmetric. And that'll bring up Symmetric Nearest Neighbor. Double click on that. And now you'll see with this filter it is getting rid of those artifacts in here so if i hide the preview here's before and then i show it here's after but an issue with this filter you'll see is that it almost makes our photo look like a painting or something so it makes our photo look not as realistic so as per usual with these noise reduction filters there's a trade-off but what we're going to do is we're going to apply a mask to this layer so that it doesn't apply the symmetric nearest neighbor effect to the entire image so i'll turn the radius up a little bit and see if I can do a better job of getting rid of the artifacts here. All right, so I've got this set to about 20 for the radius. I'll click OK to apply that. And I'll grab my zoom tool when that's done. Hold Control and zoom out. So now you guys can see what I'm talking about. This almost looks like it's got a filter on it that makes it look like some sort of painting. 
But what I'm going to do is come over here to this layer, right click and go to add layer mask. And then under initialize layer mask 2, I'm going to choose black full transparency and click add. So now with that layer mask on, it'll go ahead and mask that entire layer. But we're going to grab our zoom tool, which I still have selected here. And we're going to zoom in on the part where we can see the camera artifacts. So there's a lot right here. Uh, there's some over here in the tree. And there's a few over here in this tree as well. So I'll click on my layer mask. Grab my paintbrush tool, make sure I have the color white selected here as my foreground color. And I'm going to increase my brush size a little bit. But I'm going to make sure the hardness is set to a brush with a lower hardness. So this one's set to 025. And you can come down here and this also has a hardness slider to it so we can turn this hardness down on here. Because I want this to be a very soft brush so that the strokes that I put in here blend in with the photo behind it, the layer behind it. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint over those spots. And you'll see that as I do that, those spots will disappear. So there's one up here. There's a few over here. All right, so for the most part, it looks like we got rid of all those artifacts. There's a few over here. All right, so I'll grab my zoom tool and go ahead and zoom out. And our photo is really starting to come together. So now what I'm going to do is come over here to our original layer. And I'm going to add the unsharp mask to go ahead and sharpen up our image overall. So I'll go to filters, enhance, unsharp mask. And we can turn up the standard deviation a little bit. We don't want to overdo it. So you'll see if I turn this way up, there's just too much sharpening on here. If I turn this down a little bit, it'll look a little bit more natural. And I'm trying to find the happy medium between this image looking sharper and this image having too much noise being revealed. So I'll go with this number here, the uh, about two for the standard deviation, and I'll keep the scale at four. And here's a before, here's an after, and I'll go ahead and click OK. There's just a couple things left that I want to do, so I'll go ahead and grab my crop tool. And I've got my crop set to a fixed aspect ratio of 1920 by 1080 here. You can just type in 1920 colon 1080. And I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to crop this so that this has that aspect ratio to it. Just to give it a panoramic sort of look. And I'll go ahead and click to crop. And the last thing I'm going to do is I want these lights to be a little bit more orange so that it blends in a little bit with the orange from the street lamp here. Just to give the colors a little bit more consistency. So I'll create a new layer and I'll name this lights. Make sure the fill width is set to transparency and click OK. And I'll go ahead and move this up to the top. And then I'm going to click on my original layer here, grab my paintbrush tool, grab the foreground color and grab my color picker tool. And I'm going to click on the color of the light here. So make sure we get a nice yellow color here. And I'll click OK. And I still have a pretty soft brush selected here with the hardness turned down. I'm just going to crank up the size here a little bit. Then I'm going to come over here, click on my lights layer, and I'm just going to click everywhere where there's a light source. And then I'm going to come over here to my layer mode and change this to overlay. And now I'll come over here to colors, hue saturation, and I'm going to adjust the hue of this layer. And I'm really keeping an eye on the yellow here because I just want that yellow to be more of an orange color. So I only have to shift that over a tiny bit there. And now you'll see that our lighting has uh, shifted over to more of an orange. And I'll click OK. And if I hide this, here's a before and here's an after. And so that just helps our light source stand out a little bit. And it also helps blend it so that it's more the same color as the orange over here. So here is the previous photo before we did anything to it. And here's the final photo. So that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.